My friends, welcome to worship at Bread of Life, Deaf Lutheran Church. My name is Michelle Lewis. I am the pastor here at Bread of Life. And my name is Dorothy Sparks, and I am the deacon at Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church. And my name is Wendy DeVore, and I am the interpreter for today. I want to remind everyone that we are gathered here together not because of an accident or just some quirk that got us all together, but because God gathers us. God is active in our lives, in our world. If you are here worshiping with us today, it is because God brings us together. It's not some accident or mistake, but through the goodness and kindness and grace of God that we are gathered together. And so part of our tradition um, in these weeks that we've been worshiping together is to light a candle for each of us in whatever place we're in. We light a candle to be reminded that we are joined together through the Holy Spirit, through ways we can't understand, but through God's grace, through God's goodness, we are gathered together, even though we are in separate places at this time. So I invite you at this time to get your candle ready and light your candle um, so that we are all reminded with that visual that God gathers us, that we are together in the light of Christ. So at this time, I invite you to focus in on the candle flame to take a few moments to focus and to gather your thoughts, prepare your mind to be ready to enter into worship. Take a few deep calming breaths and let your body relax as we enter into worship together. God gathers us together and we respond to how God gathers us in many different ways. And as we begin worship, we respond to God's gathering us with a proclamation of resurrection. So Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. God has broken the chains of death forever. Alleluia. Let our praises ring. Alleluia. God has broken the chains of death forever. Alleluia. Let our praises ring. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of hope, we do not look for Jesus among the dead because Jesus is alive and is the Lord of life. Teach our hearts and our minds to trust in the risen life we share with Christ. Help us grow 
toward the fullness of life with you that you promise. We pray this and many, many more things through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Just as God gathers us and we respond to God, God then teaches us. God teaches us through the word. And um, it's always helpful to get a little bit of context about the word that we're studying. Uh, because especially during this Easter season, we have been jumping around from one gospel to another, looking at stories of Jesus showing up to the with be with the disciples after the resurrection. And so today we jump from the gospel of John, which we had been in for a couple of weeks. And now we go to the end of the gospel of Matthew. This is the very end of the gospel of Matthew, when Jesus promises to be with the disciples. So um, Jesus is fulfilling uh, scripture. That's one of the things that the Gospel of Matthew really focuses on is looking to the Old Testament promises. And how do we see Jesus fulfill those promises in his life and in the promise of life yet to come? So Jesus sends the disciples with a mission to teach others about um, what God is doing and to baptize them, to welcome them into the family that we have with God, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, and with one another. So to go and teach this, uh, and to help people learn to become disciples followers of Christ. And then Jesus gives this promise that I will be with you always, always. And so for today, that's, that's the context that Jesus is teaching us, that Jesus is with us and promises to continue to be with us. Um, that comes at the end of the gospel of Matthew. So with that, I'll ask Dorothy to share the gospel lesson today. The gospel reading from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Jesus told his disciples to meet him in the mountain in Galilee. They went there and climbed up to the top of the mountain. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus came near and spoke to them, I've received all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to obey everything that I commanded you. I myself will be with you every day until this till the end of this present age. Now, you might have noticed on television where you've seen doctors and nurses gather together out on the public streets. And the reason they are doing this is to encourage everyone to remain in unity and, and solidarity. And they can do this 
by staying home. And a lot of people have also recognized the hard work and dedication that the doctors and nurses have shown by giving them applause and airplanes um, flying banners in thanking the medical profession for their commitment. Their example serves as a powerful uh, example for us today And Jesus also served as a powerful example. He traveled with his disciples for three years, and he served as a model for them. So, I'm sorry, I'm just, hold. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. My mind is just kind of like off. So, um, all right. So would you mind? I'm so sorry. Can you start your sermon? No, you're not going fast. My mind is just, I, I, I have a lot. I'm trying not <laughs> to have other work stuff that's popping. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes, yes. In my mind, I am so sorry. All right. Um, so Bible verse, I think that was fine. I got a little confused with the, I was reading the ASL version, um, but. I think it sounded fine. Okay. All right. So yeah. verse, I'm not worried about it. Verse is fine. All right. So we'll start again your sermon. All right. You might have been seeing on television uh, the doctors and the nurses gathering together with masks on and have been wondering what are they up to or what's the meaning behind that? They are trying to promote a message for all of us to stay home. They have also been recognized for the hard work and dedication that they have been um, providing during this time in fighting the COVID virus. Even uh, there are airplanes flying overhead, flying banners and thanking the medical profession. And so their example has been very inspiring and powerful for us during this time. When Jesus was back with his disciples, he was with them for three years and they learned from him and he modeled for them his expectations and how we should be in this world. He did that by meeting and dining with sim sinners at the table. He met and spoke with a prostitute. And sometimes even the disciples were shocked and amazed by the people that Jesus chose to hang out with and associate with. If they were different than what society expected, Jesus still hung out with that person. Jesus took the time to stop and ask people what was it that they wanted or what they needed. And so the disciples learned from Jesus through his example, and he served as a model for them. When Jesus ascended into heaven, and prior to his ascension, Jesus told them to go to the people of all nations and make them my disciples. Now, in reading that verse in today's time, you might ask yourself, how do I fulfill this commandment? I don't know how to preach or teach, but, but don't fret. There are many different ways to fulfill this mission and to communicate 
the love of Christ to others. One of these ways. So after Jesus had ascended to heaven, the disciples began to go out and preach. And Peter began to recall the life of Christ. And he wrote that Jesus Christ is your example. And Jesus served as this example from generation to generation. And each generation continues to carry on the example of Jesus. And this is passed on from generation to generation. And in today's time, Jesus' example is still alive and well. I'd like to share a story. There was a, a man that was visiting different churches. And he showed up in, uh, he had tattoos and a baseball cap. And he would, he sat in this church. And the minister made the announcement that everyone was welcome to the Lord's table. And he was taken aback by this. That he, even he was allowed to come to the Lord's table. So the Lord's Supper is a way to reach out to other people. To show them that God and that Christ accepts them for who they are. And through that experience, that man became a minister. Another example is of a, a, a church that had a, a college that was across the street from it. And then one morning, a college student strolled into church. He wasn't wearing any shoes, and he had a t-shirt on, and had holes in his jeans. And he was trying to find a place to sit. And all the pews were full. So he sat down on the floor. Up on, in the front. And everyone sitting in the pews were uh, uh, taken aback by this. And they were whispering to one another like, what is he doing? And they were hoping that someone would come and tell him to, to sit somewhere else. Finally, the congregation member started to walk towards him and people were feeling relieved that he'd finally tell him what he needed to sit somewhere else. And then um, unexpectedly, this man sat down on the floor next to him. And this congregational member was also showing an example of Christ in accepting people wherever and whoever they are and joining with him down on the floor. So we can see living examples of Christ even in today's time. So now I'd like to ask you, who has brought the example of Christ to you? In your own life, who have you witnessed someone modeling Christ? Maybe it was your parents or grandparents or a friend, someone that has influenced your faith? And in my own experience, I would say that my mother was the one that brought Christ into my life or exemplified who Christ was. She was very faithful in going to church, even though she was a, a, a woman of few words. but her faithfulness was a great influence. And now my question to you is, do you 
carry the the example of Christ or bring the example of Christ to others. So if you think about feed my starving children and by volunteering and helping out that children throughout the world experience your love or Christ's love through your actions and making sure that they are fed. When you donate money to the church to support the work that the church is doing, that's another example of carrying out God's mission. And with today, with the advent of the coronavirus, and it does not mean that the love of Christ and that God's actions in the world are put on hold or suspended. There are many different ways that we can continue to bring Christ into other people's lives by talking with people and reaching out to them through the video phone, writing letters, sending them notes, and by remaining peaceful. Keeping peace in your life is also a powerful example for others. And today, Christ is still active in our lives. I would like to share another example. A mother had asked her son to go to the store and buy a loaf of bread. So the young boy left and the mother was at home waiting for him. And when he finally arrived, she said, where have you been? I've been worried about you. And he said, I saw this little boy sitting on the curb and he was crying because his bicycle was broken. So I sat down beside him and the mom was impressed and she said, I didn't know you know how to fix bicycles. And he said, no, I, I, I don't. I just sat down and cried with him. So again, he, he was able to model the behavior of Jesus, just taking the time and be with people. So these are different examples that, that even though Christ was alive 2,000 years ago, his actions and his power is still alive today. And we thank God for sending an example of how we can be in the world and that we can continue to carry Christ's examples to others. And even into the next generation. Amen. And now we pray for others. We lift up prayers of compassion for those devastated at this time. For those who have lost their jobs, business owners whose businesses are lost, people who have no home to stay at home in, People in leadership whose hearts break over the suffering of the people in their care. Those for whom home is not peaceful or a safe place. Those who are angry and desperate to open our economy despite the risk. Those who are weary of fighting for the most vulnerable. Those who are the most vulnerable and are weary of bearing the load. 
and those who are dying alone. Those whose hearts ache with loneliness. Those who are shed off from anyone who might hold them when they are afraid. Those whose suffering God alone sees. God, make us more kind, more open-hearted, and more tender with everyone we meet. Today and every day. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please take a couple of moments to take uh, time to share the peace of the Lord with uh, one another, with those who are in your home with you, and with people that you know and love, uh, with Bread of Life members. So, uh, Take your phone, send a text message, send an email um, later on, maybe VP call someone um, or send a card, write a letter, take a couple of minutes to reach out and just say the peace of the Lord be with you always um, to encourage one another to share the peace that we do have for our lives with God um, through God's goodness and grace. And peace with you, Pastor Michelle and Wendy. And as uh, our order of worship continues, we take this time to prepare our offerings, to provide our financial support to the work that we are doing here at Bread of Life. So it feels totally different because we're not together in the same place, but we are still working, doing the work that God has given us to do, the work that God has called us to do. So we ask you to take time and to be um, take a leap of faith and to share your financial gifts with Bread of Life. Um, because as we're gathering online and we're all staying at home, uh, we are able to reach out to more and more people through this amazing technology uh, resources that we have. And so our work doesn't, hasn't ended. It has, it continues. And we're able to share this worship experience with people far and wide. And it is reaching more people than we have for, in terms of new folks, um, in terms of reaching out and sharing what we're doing with other uh, deaf ministries and with other deaf people around the world. So we're continuing to have an impact. God is continuing to work through us. The gift of the community of Bread of Life continues to spread around the world. So please take a few moments and prepare your offerings and send them to Bread of Life um, to help continue the work that God has called us to do. Because, I'm going to add, because with God, when we trust God, we trust one another, we can do impossible things. Let us pray. Now lift our heart, we now lift our hearts to you like you lifted Jesus up from the grave. 
Through Jesus, bring everything from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, from death to life. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught through the Lord's Prayer. So just as God gathers us together, God teaches us and cares for us, God then sends us out into the world. We're not in some places just by mistake, but instead God sends us. God introduces us to others. God places us where we are needed. And so, as you go out from this gathering together, receive this blessing. Darkness has become light. Sorrow has given way to joy and hope. As you have been transformed by the power of the cross, go forth into the world and bear witness to the good news that you have received this day. We go in the name of the Creator and of the Savior and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are Christ's body. Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share God's good news. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen.